and I just started crying. And it was like the most powerful experience because I shed so much. And what I realized I was running from was who I thought I was. I'm going to jump straight into questions if it's cool. Yeah, let's know, do I, it. I've been doing a lot of research on your content. I've been, you know, kind of digging in a little bit. You know, you've got, you know, this, the big word buzzword that kind of encircles all of you is conscientious or, or being conscious of. So explain to me what a conscious leader, a conscientious leader might be. So to me, uh, a conscious leader is somebody that is really tapped into themselves, meaning that they're not work, not focused so much on the external circumstance, but they're focused more on the internal, because I really believe that the external experience of our life is just a direct reflection of the internal belief system that we have. And yeah. so that means, you know, how are we able to communicate with people? How are we able to recognize that, you know, any of those triggers that are being correlated um, in a conversation, mm -hmm. it's actually something that you see in yourself. Yeah. And to, if, when we can really define that and, and create that level of awareness, we start to create this level of consciousness that we attune to, to like a greater source, a greater intelligence, a loving awareness, right? Yeah. And when we can attune to that, that we see that it's, you know, the all, the all knowing, loving, <laughs> infinite intelligence yeah. is really us. And we get to be a mirror back to that. And when we connect that with our own conscious mm -hmm. conscience, yeah. and, and I recognize that the consciousness level that we attune to is based off the ability for us to like, really be who we are and be it unapologetically without fear or anxiety or wearing the mask. It's yeah. about just like honesty and integrity and alignment and authenticity, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. That's awesome, dude. Well, you know, your journey hasn't always been obviously uh, fully awoke, I guess is the best way to say it, right? You, you started off in kind of a rough space. I think it's always important to share a little bit about the origin story because I want people to know that transformation is possible no matter who they are, no matter where they've been, no matter what they've been through. Talk to us a little about your own transformation, how you got to the place you're at now. Thank you for asking this question because I, I agree. I think it's very important. And you know, for me, when I was at the age of young age of 16, I got around the wrong people and the wrong crowd, the wrong connect connections. And, you know, my parents, amazing people, like, you know, they, they came and immigrated from Poland and they were working lots. And, you know, so, you know, wanting to give us a better life and really stuck in the, that place of like scarcity, but like also just like survival. Um, yeah. And, you know, naturally as a young, you know, 16 year old boy, you just get curious and you connect mm -hmm. and you want to like, you know, figure out how, you, and, and for me, it was like, how do I like create abundance? And yeah. For me, it was like, how do I like create this life of luxury of like, you know, what, what everyone has. And, and I remember like seeing, you know, boys in school wearing nice clothes and things mm -hmm. like things that I wanted, or they going on nice trips or family vacations. And yeah. And I'm not saying that we didn't do like we didn't go, you know, we we just didn't have as much of it. And like yeah, it was yeah. super abundant, but I didn't look at it from that perspective. And so I started selling drugs. I started selling, you know, weed and then eventually cocaine and then crack. Mm -hmm. And I actually started using it myself. Yeah. Um, crack specifically. Yeah. And I became fully addicted, where like literally for three years of my life till the age of 19. I was almost using every day. And, and there were times when my parents had no idea where I was. Wow. So for me, like thinking back, you know, it just breaks my heart. Like, although I'm grateful for the experience, you know, I think of like the people that I affected around me mm -hmm. and, you know, it's interesting because I look back and they're like, I used to have shame and guilt and all these yeah. things. Yeah. And today, you know, I, I believe that I was really seeking something deeper inside myself and that there was a reason. And I believe that, you know, addiction is a, is uh, an outlet and the wrong outlet, but an outlet yep. that a lot, a lot of brilliant minds attuned to mm -hmm. because they are not, they don't have the tools to recognize how to go inside and recognize in their hearts what's possible. Yeah. And so long story short, you know, and I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible is really my dad asked me a question. And the question was a really powerful one. And it blew my mind. And for anybody that's listening right now is like, this is a question that I have now forever continued to use in my life, no matter what shows up in my life. And the question was, Eric, you know, like, 
he's been begging me to go to rehab and like yeah I'm fucking right like don't even talk to me you know mm-hmm. I don't want you to go to rehab for me and I don't even want you to do this for yourself but what if you could do this for your future self mm-hmm. and and brother it was like something came out of yeah, me yeah. like my 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 spirit like walked around and he, and he looked at me in his face in my face it's like you have such a bigger picture here you have yeah. such a bigger vision a bigger reality you come from your source like you come from greatness you know like yeah it's time to wake up yeah and immediately i was like let's do it dad let's go and he was like what like, like, super, like, <laughs> he was like yes <laughs> yes thank you god right? like yeah. thank you yeah. and the, the the thing is is that it was just a little bit awkward because not awkward but like my father, because the way that it worked, you had to do like detox and then from detox, you had to go to rehab. And yeah, um, there, there wasn't like any gaps. There wasn't like time in between for, he was worried, like, you know, multiple times I've like re relapsed and, and went yeah, back. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going right to rehab and you need to be detoxed. So you need to be clean, which yeah. makes no sense to me. But so he actually, we had to use his, like he, he peed in a cup for me so that I could use his urine to get into rehab. And that's the love and, of a father right there. Yeah. And he <laughs> saved my life. He yeah. saved my life. That moment saved my life because it brought me back to myself. And the rehab center was a very spiritual center. So it was like an Indian Métis rehab center. Okay. So yeah. I believe that, you know, my, my purpose, my, my spirit came back to like a, a, a familiar place. Mm-hmm. And it was that spiritual side of things that allowed me to really bring strength back into myself and recognize the energy. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. because I think a lot of people, they look, they look at their spiritual side as something that's not needed or something that doesn't add a lot of value. And it's been my experience that my spiritual side of me um, offers the most valuable. In fact, it's the framework or the foundation of the footing that I actually stand on to this day. You know, all of my decisions funnel through my faith. All of my all of my choices funnel through my faith. All of my love for other people and humanity funnels through my faith. All of my ideas and concepts about real, building a business around helping other people funnels through my faith. You know, and it wasn't until I got in touch with that that I began to identify the inner strengths, the inner superpowers that I had in my own life. You know, you mentioned addiction earlier, and I've always kind of looked at addiction as a kind of like the an outward expression of an inner searching. Mm. Right. And, you know, my father struggled with alcohol for a number of years. And, you know, one of the things that was interesting is when he when he got sober, um, one, I was super proud of him. Right. Because he'd spent 30 years as an alcoholic and, you know, he never believed he could get there. Like he never believed he'd be able to get clean. Like so he never tried. He just gave up, you know, kind of thing. He got there, which is fantastic. But then he very quickly realized he replaced one addiction with another addiction. And I think that the I think we're all desperately as human beings searching for love, grace and mercy. And where we choose to find that or the theory of it is super duper important, mm. you know, which is why one of the reasons why I know you had a chance to encounter with a man himself, Tony Robbins, that, that kind of like was a, ma- a major catalyst. And obviously you've been part of it, part of their organization off and on for a while now. Talk to me a little bit about that. How did that transition happen? Wow. Yeah, Tony. Uh, Tony's my He's a good dude. He really is. I just got to be helping him and Dean with a launch. So yeah, Tony is is such an amazing brother um, of like divine spirit and yeah. he saw something in me um and it was like this soul recognition you know like this soul energy like recognition and i remember i was in costa rica and i was doing some like journey on myself and he posted a picture of mm-hmm. something that like just really resonated with me and it was like literally something i was looking at like it was a sunset but like it was a different sunset but very like it just yeah, was yeah. water around me and I messaged Tony and I was like, Tony, I'm coming back to Edmonton, which is where I'm from. Mm-hmm. And you're doing a small event. And I'm, I'm excited because I know that I'm going to meet you. Like, yeah, <laughs> whatever, like just throw it out there. He responds to me and he says, <laughs> Eric, like, I want you to come up and shake my hand. And I first, uh, at first, you know, the mind was like, this isn't Tony. This is his team, whatever. Like, yeah, um, he's like, no, like, I want you to come up, shake my hand and connect with me. So, of course, you know, I finally get the courage because, like, you know, I was, like, you know, fearful of, like, what people are going to think. Like, I'm trying to, like, step. So, finally, I, I get there and, like, I, I stand up and I go and I walk. And three separate times, the security guards were, like, go sit down. Like, <laughs> like what, are you, what are you thinking, right? Yeah. And, and in the, it was in the, in the middle of his talk, so granted, right? Like, so 
on a break, like when he's on the thing jumping, I walk up to the front and he recognizes me and he sees me yeah. and he waves at me and he comes and he gives me a big hug. Aww. And in that moment, there was this like transition of energy. And I have to tell you, bro, that like that was what sparked. It was like, you know, a man of magnitude, a man of, a man of that great of faith and intention and like yeah. heart wisdom is seeing something in me so that means that I'm reflecting some, and of course, at the time, I didn't think that I was just like, mm -hmm. wow, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so I ended up going to one of his first UPWs in London and list, list, listen, like, you know, my business was just starting. I was just learning about like what I was, who I was and what I was doing and like taking this entrepreneurial journey. And he, um, I ended up getting moved to the front. You know, the divine forces, you know, I ended up being in the- Yeah, family. which those seats are kind of expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like a divine force. Like, I can't even tell you how it happened because it was like his nephew and, and then Sage. And then like, like it was just, it was totally divine. Yeah. And um, so I ended up sitting in the front for the all four days. And I'm sitting there with these like powerhouse entrepreneurs, like some of the best like celebrities, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, like people just doing like huge shit in the world. And I feel, I feel unworthy. Like, I feel like, wow, like I, I don't belong here. You mm -hmm. know, I feel um, so like, this is, this is, I'm not, I'm, I shouldn't, like I have to prove myself. I have to like, like, why am I sitting here? Like, this is not for me. And I remember like my inner critic just like, telling me and like belittling me regularly like listen man like what are you doing and it was just like no like i'm gonna show up here with full authenticity and like full energy yeah. and i like i did and i was like every and, like i was like full energy like to tony and <laughs> all in and and the plats and everybody from from the back were, were coming up to like the camera was always like focused. yeah <laughs> they would like come up to me and say i love your energy I absolutely love your energy. Like, what's your name? What do you do? Like, yeah. And my business was still in its like early stages. And I was like, you know, like I have health and fitness and I like, I was just learning marketing and like, like I could feel myself quite crawling back into like my hole, you know? Yeah. And I was really, really scared, but I was just like, like, no, like this is what I do, you know, like just, Courage, so much courage, bro. Yeah. Like, so much courage. I was so fucking scared. To and I had no idea what to say. Like, ever. <laughs> I had, like, just like this belief inside of me. Like, there's yeah. something greater here. Like, just keep going. Just keep talking to these people. Show up with your heart. Be like graceful, you know, be intentional and just be willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And so that's what I did. And, and I remember at the end, there was this like opportunity to become part of Platinum Partnership. And I go to Scotty, Scotty's Tony's, Tony's brother, Sage's, mm -hmm. or sorry, Sage's brother, Tony's brother-in-law. Yeah. And he looks at me and he's like, Eric, you know, like, this is something that may change your life. You know, mm -hmm. it may not, I don't know, but like, you got to like lean into your heart and really make a decision. And he put his hand on my heart mm -hmm. and he's like, if you make this decision, right? Like you've got this whole community to support you, right? And I, I put down the deposit, which I think at that time was 25 grand. Yeah. And it was all the savings that I had. It was all the money that I had. It had I had nothing left. Wow. It was like everything that I did, like, that's it. I was, and, and, and then I started to pay 60 or like, yeah, 60 grand in like payments, <laughs> right? Because it's 85K. So, so I was like, I didn't know how I was going to figure it out, but I was like, fuck it. You know, like I trust my feeling. I believe in the wisdom. And for the first time ever, Stephen, for the first time in my life, I realized that it was nothing to do with money, that it was like, I was priceless compared to, compared to the yes. dollar. Yeah. And it was that break barrier. I literally woke up the following day with like, like my, my heart palpitating, like, what did I just do? <laughs> like, it was like, it was like really just spending the time to like ease into that decision and trusting that I was following wisdom that I had no idea. Yeah. That was even inside of me. I was trusting a greater source that was running through me an intelligence that knew something about me mm -hmm. that I had no idea about. 
And it, it was it was this belief, this faith, this fierce like willingness to just want to be heard, be seen, be understood. And, yeah. and, and, and really for myself, because if I can understand, hear, and see myself, then guess what? Once I can open that up yeah. for myself, now I'm ready to really spread light. Now I'm ready to really spread the love. Well, let me ask you this. The, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. And, the, and all, I'm, all I was going to say, just to wrap it up, was like really like, you know, after that, um, it really expanded me. It, it expanded me in the right people. It expanded me, you know, Tony like would call me by name, you know, and like would give me big hugs regularly. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it became this like friendship. It became this, experience and people in the community started to like really trust and yeah um i just i just it's like energy is really everything and i really realized that and it tony says he says this one quote that he talks about when he shares his story and he says i have the energy that everybody wants and mm -hmm. it really resonated with me because today as the man that i am and the way that i show up playfulness fun you know yeah. exciting and energetic yeah, people see that, and, and it's because I own it. It's not because I hide it. It's not because I limit it. It's because yeah. I am I'm I'm this abundant, intense energy that can be powerfully contained, but have a lot of fun in the process. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot. Of, I think the reason it's so contagious. I think it's one of the reasons people enjoy coming on the show so much. <clears throat> as one, I'm always going to show them love, respect, and 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 be and be super like graceful to them. Right, I'm, that's just who I am. Right, it's that whole thing. You treat people how you want to be treated. I think the other thing that makes it so contagious is everybody's walking around or say everybody, the vast majority of the population is walking around feeling depleted. Yeah. You know, they, they've had various experiences that have you know caused them to give up on themselves. They've had various experiences that have caused them to give up on ever being a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, a business owner, a musician, a painter, like the list goes on and on and on and on because so many times we're always chasing basically what somebody else's expectation is of us. Yeah. And, you know, as you've been doing all this, the, the question that keeps coming to my mind, it keeps coming to my spirit is, is ask, ask him this, ask him this. So here's, here's what I'm going to ask you. Given everything that you've learned, giving your entire transformation, your entire journey to date, who are you most called to serve? So, and, and this is really simple. It, 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 this is really simple as a result of being calling to, 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 to be serving. It's serving myself. And as a result of serving myself, I serve my creator. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my intention every time when I go into a ceremony or an experience is how do I serve myself so I can get closer to my creator, mm -hmm. to my highest source of power, to my to Pachamama, to God, to whoever you want to call it. Like, to, like it, it doesn't matter the name. It matters the belief, right? And to me, the, the importance of recognizing the closeness that I get to the divine because when I see the divine in me, I see the divine in everybody. Yep. yep. And to me, that is the most important way to connect true wisdom and merging of consciousness, of creativity, of possibilities, of implementing these visions that we all have called dreams. Yep. And, and, and making them our reality. Because so for so long, for so long, Stephen, you know, people are told, you know, that, that you can become anything that you want when you're a child. But once you start reaching some sort of age that you, you have to limit yourself. Yeah. And I call bullshit. And it's because they start aging. It's because they build an ego structure. It's because they listen to other people to create, you know, conditions mm -hmm. around that have created their own conditions. So they project. And instead of recognizing the wisdom that's in them, the dream that has been put into them by source, by pure source, mm -hmm. comes for a reason. And you have to, you have to honor that. And when yeah. you honor that, you stay as the child, the pureness, the fun, the playful self. And when you recognize that you live on the greatest playground in the universe called planet Earth, mm -hmm. you get to start to play. Yeah. When you get to start to play, you stay into this vulnerable, loving self, inner child mm -hmm. that is attuned from day one to pure source energy to your creator you now have unlearned all of that mind chatter inner yeah. critic bullshit that has been projected from society that you've tried to prove to yourself that yeah. you've tried to prove to others 
and that to me is the, the, the number one thing so so definitely to the like to self divine and divine the term self to divine rock on rock on yes. well look you know you, you you created something pretty interesting called the mrr method right what is the mrr method and how can it help so it's it really is how to create you know monthly recurring revenue and to me the biggest thing about monthly recurring revenue is about building momentum generating reach and optimizing mm-hmm. potential and you know i call it business nirvana it, the, the 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 course behind it but realistically you know all of us can generate momentum in ourselves in the way that we you know see our clients because the way we see ourselves mm-hmm. you know we can generate reach by really amplifying and connecting authentically by having a direct connection with individuals and we can optimize retention in their lives in our businesses no matter what that looks like by fulfilling on a delivery on the me- unique mechanism that you're really bringing to the marketplace mm-hmm. so my belief is like you know the mrr method it's a really powerful way to bring your ideas your dreams your visions yeah. into reality and and it's a it's a three step process but it's it's a it's a lot longer of a process if you actually execute it yeah. because sometimes there's going to be iterations and speed bumps along the road. And people think <laughs> they need to get everything perfect the first time. Yeah. And for it to happen really quickly. Uh, absolutely. And doing it like, you know, it's so funny. It's like I have clients that, you know, they think they just, it just happens. Right. Um, but the truth is, is like the biggest picture behind the MRR method is really the wisdom that you're, 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 you're that it's coming. From, mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. creating, how can you create nirvana from your, in yourself so that you can create nirvana, business nirvana as well? Love it, man. Love it, dude. Well, as you're, as you're kind of walking through this, this level now, has it, has it transformed how you deal with not only your professional relationships and your friendships, but also how you, you approach loved ones, uh, either in family or in romance? Is this, I mean, is, does everybody start to get a sense of love? Because it seems like when you radiate love, radiate grace, it's, it's um, contagious. Let's put it that way. This is um, really special. Um, so about three, maybe three and a half weeks ago, I took, uh, I did a bufo ceremony and it was mm-hmm. like, a, it's a really powerful ayahuasca. It comes from a toad uh, known as 5-MeO DMT maybe in some places, mm-hmm. but like it, it, it literally is like a, a, an extremely powerful um medicine that was really it's a very honoring to to your human experience and to Mm -hmm. your spirit to help you see things that um you may have not seen before Mm -hmm. okay and this level of intention for me was set again and it was so beautiful that you asked me this question prior to because the intention was how do i get closer to you god Mm -hmm. how do i get closer to the divine what do I need to do to get closer to you? And that was the intention I set for this ceremony. And that's what I got. Yeah. Um, my ego showed up so powerfully. So powerfully. Like, like he was terrified. Mm-hmm. And I literally got up and I walked out of the tent, out of the like the compound. And like mm-hmm. the shaman is chasing me. There's three guys that are like security. <laughs> chasing me. And run away, run away, run away. <laughs> and I'm literally running. Yeah. My ego is running away. Oh, like, man. like I became a superhuman for three kilometers. I ran. People are like, you ran on Bufo? <laughs> like, where did you, where did you get this energy from? Like, what is going on inside you? Oh my. It, it, the shaman was like, I've never seen this before. I literally was running full sprint. Three guys couldn't catch me. Dogs were chasing me. People were looking at me like, you know, like <laughs> there was this, and all of a sudden there was this, like this voice, this voice, like you have nothing left to prove brother. Mm-hmm. You're loved. Like you are enough. Yeah. Like you have nothing left to prove. You are whole as you are. And it was the greatest feeling. And I stopped and I screamed. And I just started crying. And it was like the most powerful experience because I shed so much 
And what I realized I was running from was who I thought I was. Mm-hmm. This mask that I was wearing for so fucking long, trying to prove myself as a man, as a partner, as a provider, Mm -hmm. all this heaviness that I was carrying, all these societal things that we, what it meant to be a masculine man, what it meant to be, you know, this person that is supposed to like, like protect, you know, the physicality that, you know, all of these fucking stories. Mm-hmm. And I realized that the only thing I ever wanted to do was be loving and be loved. Yeah. That's what we, most of us yeah. want. Yeah. I mean, I've said on the show before, I think, you know, that there's really four main values in life to be seen, heard, valued, and appreciated. All of those are semblances of love to be seen. Obviously I want to be seen as being, in, you know, seeing being significant. Someone, someone else's eye, eyes. I want to be heard. If I share an idea, a concept, I just want somebody to listen for five seconds right? To be valued, to know that I have intrinsic value to those that I love most or those that I admire most, right? To be appreciated when, when I have made an accomplishment or a breakthrough or a surrender moment or something like that, that I've come through. I want to know that I, that, you know, that everybody else has seen that as a, as a rule of thumb and says, ah, I like that. That's cool. You know, it's an inspiration side of thing. And I, and I feel like as human beings, we're all searching for one, if not all four of them at the same time. And like yourself, I found myself connected to my creator that's that's where that's where i am i mean that's where i'm really locked in right um i know that i'm the greatest version of myself when i'm the greatest resemblance of him right and as a result i'm able to see people for where they are in their life you know when you first hopped on before we literally officially hopped on hopped on air it was like light and light right just like straight up light and light it's, it's pretty easy to see right yeah, you know? just hit it off yeah, yeah you know i mean it just it's just you when you've had experiences that test the very humanity of yourself and come on the other side of it, you realize how, how minute or how limited humanity plays an ultimate role in your life. You know, I'm a big believer. One of the reasons I asked you the question about who you created uh, call to serve is because I'm a big believer that our created value, our created essence is directly connected to helping someone else through the same mess that we came through at an earlier stage. So, for example, you know, going through homelessness, going through embezzlement, going through broken home, all that kind of stuff that I've been through as a rule of thumb, I used to think that that was the problem. It's the problem. It's the problem. It's the problem. That I'm not enough. That I, no one loves me. Da, 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 on and on and on and on until I, too, came to that, that divine connection we're talking about. We, and I was able to connect and figure out, oh, I'm fine. Like, I don't even need all this stuff. What am I, what am I freaking out about? You know, and it's funny now because now I go backwards and I, I, I gravitate towards people who are searching they're searching for peace. They're searching for harmony. They're searching for next steps. They're searching for strategy. They're searching for just feeling like their, their life is not on autopilot. So anytime I get to talk to a fellow soul searcher like yourself, I always get in, I always get intrigued and it always makes interesting questions pop up. So I hope you don't mind if I'm prying too much. <laughs> no, I love it, bro. And to me, this is like important because how can we, how can, you know, through my story, mm-hmm. I mean, like us being real and there's no prying. It's just honoring like, our journey it's like yeah. it's really sharing that you know i've been telling like when i was like i felt like i was dying yeah you know and i realized that 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 there's such a bigger purpose here there's a bigger moment here and when you realize that like when you tap into this level right here yeah like, that's the sole purpose of why you're here and everybody here is like in the divine grace showing your way your lesson to, mm-hmm. to becoming the best version of yourself but you also have free will yeah right you always have a choice right and the choice is sometimes gonna be so fucking hard yeah. and, the, and and that's what's gonna allow you to become the greatest possible version of yourself so you asked me a question how it goes and relates to my my relationships you know mm-hmm. i have to tell you that because because I work so hard on the most important relationship, which is the relationship with myself. Yeah. I have great relationships with everybody around me. Yeah. And to me, you know, in the past, I used to tell my story. I used to ask, I used to ask, you know, my, my ex-girlfriend, you know, for, for love, like I needed mm-hmm. love from her. Or I had expectations from my team to do this or, you know, my client, like there's let go of all that shit. If you stop creating expectations, if I, when I started, when I, when I stopped creating those expectations in my life, mm-hmm. I started to really see people and yeah. I started because I started to really see myself. 
So instead of building this like outcome and being attached to something, just accept that mm -hmm. it may not be that way. And what is it, what is in that moment to learn? You know, I, I was just in a recent relationship that we ended like three or four months ago, mm -hmm. but it was very short. It was like four months of just the most expansive version of myself. She was a super spiritual human. Mm -hmm. and, and I was really like working hard yeah. on myself. Yeah. And she really kept me to a, 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 a very high standard. And it was just so beautiful to, to recognize that we were such powerful mirrors to each other. And mm -hmm. all the work that we needed to do was on ourselves. It was, yeah. it was like, we we mirrored each other so well right it's easy yeah. to blame all that shit and that's where i like really have come into like relationship is you know bringing this energy of like a masculine focus but also like a fun loving feminine focus yeah in all dynamics in all dynamics because that's where the polarity is created and when you build balance mm -hmm. and so if if I attune to my my own energy that way. I can attune to anybody's energy that way. I could step into a meeting with a bunch of a bunch of amazing men, like masculine men, and, and really own the room. And I could totally do the same thing with like extremely feminine ladies. Yeah. Because I know how to match and create polarity as well. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that popped up as you were talking is and I I actually jotted it down here's here's I can't talk today. Here. Um and it goes back to one commonality that you and I shared in our greatest moment of struggle. We both felt like we were dying, but we felt like the soul was dying before the body was. So our, our soul was kind of like in, in many respects, it was searching and searching and searching and searching and searching. And we both had catalyst moments that caused what I call a rejuvenation or even a resurrection of possibilities, dreams, um, connection, polarity, all of that. Is that would I would you, even you, go deeper. I'm um, like, um my ego died yeah okay like my my spirit was really present and my soul was but, but what my soul did was be the observer of the, my spirit was the observer of watching my ego pass okay and so it was really beautiful because um i read my i remember my spirit my soul having connect like compassion mm -hmm. and paying attention and noticing people and feeling in their like their presence in their spirit them having compassion to me yeah so so it was my ego that in that moment was really physically like taking hold of my body and like wow like i'm about to go mm -hmm. i'm about to really go and i need to protect myself right now and what am i going to do right now i'm going to run right? yeah yeah and physically he, he did that and and even when i was doing drugs like that was that was that was like soul sucking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was like ego death. Like I'm out of here, and mm -hmm. you now get to be so full of spirit, so full of like the pure love that you are, the pure mm -hmm. connection that you are to the divine, and now you get to like really feel that bliss. Yeah. And but but most importantly, what's 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 most important because a lot of people like they do these transformative experiences and they're like they go back to their life and repeat the pattern and they, it's about integrating it's about making that execution still happen it's about taking all of these ideals and visions and mm -hmm. making it a reality in this physical space because that is the gift that we are is like living in this playground let's make it real let's have yeah. fun well let me ask you this why do you think we focus on everybody else, but we tend to neglect ourselves. Why, why do we, why do we as human beings go through life largely neglecting ourselves? So my belief system is that, um, when we are growing up, right, we tend to actually focus on ourselves, right. Um, in this is in the sense of purity, like dreaming, yeah, like I think it's kids. Kids. yeah, we get up and fall down, get up and fall down, jump in the pool, can't swim, but we fit, you know, like help, right? Like yeah. we figure it out. Like we, yeah. you know, like, and we're willing, we're audacious, mm -hmm. right? And at, at, at age seven, this ego structure gets formed in our brains. 
and we start listening to all of the no's that have been told to us over the past and we start to remember all of them and then we start to pay attention to like people that we admire wow like they're living our dreams or wow like you know they're telling us we can't do this or people like our parents that you know have their own set of belief systems that now are projecting that on ourselves mm-hmm. so we start to create this structure and we start to formulate what it means to be like to be successful to be happy to be fulfilled to yeah. be honest to be you know create a like whatever the case that you want to you want to create in your life and you start creating these stories and now you have you attach yourself to this story and once you attach yourself to this story that's the route you're taking that's the timeline you're taking because that's the only thing you know so for example i was born into a roman catholic family right mm-hmm. and yeah. that religion for me just didn't make sense right it just didn't make sense because although i believe in mary and jesus and the ascended masters and, and all of it the, the 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 elements of the patriarchy and the way that it was presented and how that was delivered um for for like lowering the consciousness of the feminine force didn't make sense to me mm-hmm. and so i started asking myself questions around why are there so many rules and boxes or like you're going to be damned to hell if you do like break the commandment or all these things um that didn't make sense to me as as i was growing up and i remember going to church and like seeing people go there like pray and then you know go and do things like a day after that would would would, not, would be totally out of alignment of what like true yeah. spirituality or faith is yeah or yeah. you know pay attention to what they're wearing and things like this so so what, what what other people are wearing so you're going to church to pray to god and you're comparing what this person's driving versus this person's wearing yeah is that real fucking like is that honest is that it just didn't make sense to me mm-hmm. so i started asking myself the question is like well what if there's questions out there that i don't there's things out there that i don't know that i don't know mm-hmm. and there's still so many <laughs> and I stopped comparing myself and of course I still compared myself. Yeah. But I yeah. thought I stopped comparing myself. <laughs> Don't right? we all? Right? Yeah. And and so what the, the biggest thing that I believe is because we're seeking acceptance of somebody's love. We're really seeking acceptance of somebody's love whether it's the person going to church comparing the car and the clothes or whether it's like um you know trying to connect to their religion to understand you know how do i can like compare you to 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 you almighty one you know to this this person that you know that we're in, in a relationship with mm-hmm. that we're we're saying that they're un, unfulfilling me but really it's 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 because we're seeking their love mm-hmm. and if we're seeking their love it's because we don't have enough of our own mm-hmm. we haven't created that in ourselves we haven't accepted who we are at the foundation yeah Yeah. Because it doesn't matter what external circumstance comes into our world, COVID, whatever the situations are, whatever religion, whatever anything, it doesn't matter. What matters is at the end of the day, if you love yourself wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, mm-hmm. you will not pass judgment on anybody. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree with that. You know, I've enjoyed this conversation quite a bit. You know, it's um, it's interesting because there, you know. I get asked all the time why I, why I choose not to side on one agenda or another agenda. I'm like, well, it's because it's not my calling. My calling is to be a bridge between multiple nations, multiple people groups, multiple this, multiple that. And as a result, I also know that my place is not one to judge, condemn, or harm other people. If I judge, condemn, or harm other people, I'm actually doing the opposite of what I believe my faith to stand for. Mm-hmm. What I would rather do is allow people to know that there's compassion, grace, mercy and love on the other side of just coming this way or coming this way, you know, taking a few steps forward on your own. I myself have found my my identity um and it's not attached to my businesses, it's not attached to my team members, it's not attached to my family. Uh my wife recently asked me she goes, "Are she goes, why are you doing this stuff? Why are you on stages? Why are you writing book why why?" Is it because you feel like you need to be valued and loved? I said no. I just feel like it's the greatest way I can serve. Like I just, you know, I've I've been through a tremendous, tremendous amount of stuff, learned a lot of tremendous amount of things, and the things that I know tend to help people. Right? Same in your case. Oh, that's the only way, bro. And it's like you become their mirror. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. You become their mirror. So like when, when you show up on these stages, write these books, create your stories and you're, you're courageous, you, you, the courage that you are in the way that you're sharing with authenticity and vulnerability, yeah. there's, you have compassion for any experience that they're, that they're going through, but mm -hmm. you're sharing your own because you know that if they look at you, there's a mirror that they get to see at some point in their journey, they're yeah. going to create enough awareness in their mind. They're going to see the mirror that's standing in front of them. Yeah. And when they, when they see that mirror that's standing in front of them, you're going to be there to open them, hug, hug them, support them, yeah. do whatever is necessary. Yeah. You know, it's funny when people come to our live events, one of the things that they say all the time is they, they feel like they're accepted for the first time in decades. I'm like, it's cause you are like, I could oh. care less what you did three days ago. As long as you're ready to change now, let's go, let's go. Come on. You kind of thing. Yeah. One final question for you. Yeah. Um, with a limited amount of time we got left when it comes to your journey specifically, Right. And, you know, you've obviously been on a journey for a while. I'm a big believer in the, in the power of a journey. I, that's why I, I use the word journey, you know, journey principles, my journey principles Institute. Like I love the word journey because I identified a long time ago that your journey is your story matched with the principles that you use to live it. That's it. Which ultimately gives you your ultimate fulfillment and outcome over time. Right. What would you tell the younger Eric that maybe is the 15, 16 year old Eric that was desperately searching. What, if you could sit him down right now and give him three steps to move forward, what would they be? Keep playing. Okay. Make sure that you're always having fun. Like that, that's the number one fundamental, like it, it has to be playful. Okay. You know, be vulnerable. Don't worry. You're still so fucking loved and appreciated. There is like, as long as you're vulnerable, Mm -hmm. you, you show like the greatest strength. There's so much strength there. Yeah. Yeah. And I love fucking love you so much. Now go be you. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Well, man, Eric, I've had a blast hanging, hanging out with you, dude. The time just like flew by, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, have a safe trip back from, uh, you said Tulum, right? You're in Tulum right now. Back to Brazil. Tulum, I leave to Brazil in 10 days. Back, back to Alto Paris or back, back home. Awesome, man, dude, you're a beautiful human being. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, my man. Bless you, brother. And I just want to add, you know, thank you to you, man. Thanks for, you know, I just want to like really honor what you're doing. And oh, thanks, man. And thanks for, for having me on the show. You know, you're a great man. And, and, you know, like what you're doing in the world is beautiful. And I'm just uh, really inspired to, to know you, to connect with you, to call you a brother. And let's continue like serving at the most fun and amazing part of life which is this moment so like let's amazing share brother much love Dude, to you and thank you man thank you so much final word how can everybody stay connected with you learn more about you but uh, if honestly just check me out on instagram at eric balance um or check out my website ericbalance.com simple rock and easy on. rock on dude well you have a great rest of your day and we will see you again my friend bless you brother. all right take care sure, if you love that interview go ahead and check out this next one right here so the source of the pain isn't the source of the problem. And so many people going to therapy come in with a presenting problem, but it's not the problem. I'm an alcoholic. No, your problem is you don't feel worthy enough.